let's get down to some manifestation breast tax because I think we probably both hear from students and people like, well, I have got my vision board and I understand feeling is the secret. I've got to have the vibration in order to impress upon the subconscious. Like I got the knowledge of it, but it just doesn't work or it works once, but it doesn't work repeatedly. What do you say to people who have trouble manifesting? Why might that be happening and how can they correct that? Oh my goodness. Um, well, first of all, you have to be persistent, right? Um, and just know that it, it can be a process. Um, first of all, you're always manifesting, right? If you can grasp that, you're always manifesting. You consciously choose, okay, do I want to just, do I want to um, set an intent? Like, do I want to set conscious intentions and be persistent? Or do I just want to try to manifest things here and there and just kind of leave things to chance and not be like, not be persistent about it. Right. So you can, I have a vision board, half the, from like two years ago, half the stuff hasn't manifested because my intention behind it was just kind of like, Oh, you know, I put it up, it'll manifest or whatever. Um, but I'm not, and not, not to say none of it won't manifest, but I'm not persistent about going back to certain things that I want, I want to manifest, um, set an intention, have just know I, you know, I'm setting this intention. Um, I'm putting this out into the world. It will come to pass. And anytime I have an opposing thought, just redirect the thought. It's actually really simple, right? You set an intention, uh, your words align to that your thoughts align to that, your feelings align to that. And if they don't, you redirect them. A lot of people think that they're focusing on a manifestation and they're subtly focusing on it not coming to pass. You have to train yourself. You have, there's no way around it. You have to train yourself until you cultivate that awareness and just realize, you know, it's going it, to, it's going to come to pass. I don't have to worry about it. In one of Neville's lectures, order then wait, <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. the idea where you order everything you want and you, and you are confident that the waiter's taking your order. It's going to go back to the kitchen. The kitchen's going to prepare it. And you're not constantly checking with the waiter. Did they, are, are they cooking it the right way? You know, you're not, you're relaxing. You're sitting yeah. down at the table, having a conversation with your friend, you're having a cocktail and you're just waiting. So when you say persistence, I think that, um, that is just the noticing of when something's out of alignment with that, which you have called into creation. Yeah. And, and that's the thing that does require training be, and also the indulgence of lower moods, yeah. even though we can maybe muster the feeling of that, which we want to become by feeling that we are already that if we spend 90% of our life, though, actually indulging reactive and lower vibrational feelings, then that can counteract what you've, I can it, maybe I'm wrong. Can that counteract? No, it can. And that's why, like on my podcast, I talk about culti cultivating awareness. I talk about all the time, the lower mood, like lower moods, right? The opposing thoughts instead, like, what are they teaching you? What they're showing you something or else you wouldn't be experiencing them. Neutralize them observe them don't react right and that it can take practice to not react but things keep showing up over and over and over again um as repetitive cycles or habits or whatever until we can observe and just neutralize them and look at them and go okay what is this showing me what do i need to learn from this each moment that that we observe and we can kind of neutralize so, like a lower mood or something and look at it and just neutralize it, not react. And I'll go down a rabbit hole, but go, okay, what is this showing me? And choose in that moment. I can choose to stay in this lower mood or I can choose to just observe it, realize it's there and rise to a high state of consciousness and, and say, okay, no, this doesn't resonate with me now. I'm changing my story. It doesn't resonate. In that moment, when you take that choice or when you make that choice, you rise to a higher state of consciousness in that moment. What happens is when manifesting, as we dip into those lower moods or we doubt our manifestation, we're shifting timelines. 
we're on a trajectory to this timeline to my desire. And every given moment, because your time isn't linear, right? It's, you know, everything's happening simultaneously all at once. Many, many different timelines, infinite timelines. So every, so when you doubt, when you go into lower moods, right? If you stay in those lower moods, um, you're dipping into a different timeline, right? That, that essentially it could take longer to reach your manifestation because you're no longer on the, that timeline to that desire, right? Um, so you have to be vi really vigilant kind of of your thoughts and your moods, but be careful not to react, right? Just observe what is it teaching me? Um, because if you react, you're going to manifest, you're going to keep manifesting it. It's really important to neutralize, be non-judgmental, and just observe and make the right choices in any given, in any given moment. Either I'm going to accept it or I'm not going to accept it because this is no longer part of my story and I don't resonate with it. That I think uh, is the work. The work of manifestation is the training of the mind and, and, and cultivating, as you say, the awareness, the noticing and the feeling, just know, like check in, maybe set an alarm on your smartphone, check in a few times a day. How am I feeling right now? Where's the tension yeah. at? How can I loosen it? But that takes time. And Neville says, and feeling is a secret that until then, until you've got it, you sleep in prayer, you sleep in prayer, which is the domain of the subconscious, like right yeah. before you fall asleep, your last waking concept of yourself is how you're going to create when you fall asleep. And you're mentioning dreams and you're mentioning um, manifestation. Can you speak a little bit about sleep and, and how one might want to prime themselves before? I mean, what if I had a really bad day, you know, or what if I'm actually legitimately physically ill in my life? I've had, a, I'm suffering. How can I break out of that right before I go to bed and spend some time in a different concept of self. Do you have any tools for that? Yes. I started practicing revision, but not necessarily visualizing before sleep. Um, I've done that, you know, plenty of times. It's not a regular practice for me now, only because I'm kind of at a point where I, I don't need to, like, I just don't do it. I don't, I don't feel like I need to. Um, but I started scripting, using revision and scripting. So at the end of the day, and I, I say this, but I should point out that um, there were only like, I'm, there, were, there were only a few things like during the day where I really needed to kind of revise and change because I haven't had, since finding Neville, I haven't had like really horrible days in a really long, long time, like many years. Um, things pop up but um I I I was like you know what I I could change this right so I brought I took out my notebook and at night I would write an entirely different story of, of how my day went it's entirely exactly like it was a fantasy novel or something like this is how my day went right and I found that um when I went back and read over that, or even in um, my regular scripting journal where I wasn't necessarily revising, but I was writing scripting like my future as it was happening now, they're like new memories. They override um, the old memories. Now, when I, if I go back and look at my journals or if I think about something, things that didn't even happen are memories now as if they've happened. I would say, especially for anybody that has difficulty visualizing, um, first of all, know that no matter what happens, you can change it. Okay. It, break out a journal and write your day as though it went perfectly the day that you wanted, right. And do it before bedtime. Um, and do that until, you know, if you like, you'll start to notice you no longer have those really bad days. Um, and you'll develop new memories. Yeah. Because everything is malleable. Everything is malleable. You can change anything. Oh my God. That was juicy and great. Um, because I, I do find when I'm employing the pruning shears of revision, which is what Neville called it, which is a visualization technique, like, but I'm tired, you know, and also that takes an extra special kind of skill 
to continue in a hypnagogic or trance state, right? And, but also be vigilant with how you're pruning it, <laughs> like in the, because you yeah. can start to dream. Especially can, without falling asleep. <laughs> that's right. I go to sleep before I'm, I'm done. So that's such a great little tip to just journal it and just be feelingly thinking about it, putting your energy into it as you do, and then drop off to sleep. I love that. 